I believe that in order for us to design a better country, we first need to redesign ourselves to be more purposeful. And that means being more than just workers or managers, to be much more than consumers. And I think it's something we've heard a lot today of. But I would say that we have to be designers. Now, um, something that's apparent to you if you become a designer, and this is, you know, this occurs to some people at a very young age, is that designers are very special people. They are, you are. You see things that other people don't see, right? You have these special powers. You create things. Being a designer um, means this engagement with the world. I would say it's a kind of a superpower, right? I think so. So I've been a designer for uh, 20 odd years and along that way I've designed little gadgets, lots of them, I've designed uh, better banks, I've designed even policy, um, I've designed everything that came across my path. Um, and along the way I've discovered four things. Firstly, every person can design things. Secondly, our design defines us. Thirdly, good design makes things better. And fourthly, if enough people start to learn to develop their ability to design things, we can design a better country. Now, I know that you know that design is not just the ability to choose really cool paint colors, and it's not just the ability to design gadgets. Um, design is much more interesting than that. I mean, I do both of those things, but it's more interesting. Um, brands are designed, products are designed, banks are designed, business models are designed, even family holidays are designed, right? Do you agree with me? Have you designed anything recently? Anyone? Could I see any hands? You have. So all of those things that I've mentioned have been designed, even, uh, you know, clever life hacks that you find on the internet in large numbers, they've been designed. Design is the ability to create something, to conceive it in your mind, to create it for a purpose. And that anybody can do. So you don't need a PhD, you don't need a design degree, and you don't need to figure it out because you're already doing it. So, um, how do you grow your superpower? How do you grow this design power? The first thing that you have to do, if you, and let's say for example, I was your little green Yoda, and you were my Luke, uh, I would say to you, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, is is there, only why? Because why is the question of design. Why is the question of purpose. And it's the first question that a designer asks. Uh, why does this thing fit over here? Why does it go in there? Why do you have to go around the corner to do that? These are the questions that designers ask. They ask why, uh, and it's the first thing that you have to do, to ask why right down to the root of things. And, I mean, and that's also the behavior of you know, very clever engineers and also very small children. Five-year-old children like to ask why right down to the root of things. So that's the first question. And the second thing to do then is to try many answers. So when we were all at school and we did mathematics, um, there was usually one correct uh, answer to every question. But in life, so many questions have more than one answer. Yet, most of us still stop at the first answer that we find. The next thing to do then is to experiment with those answers to take each of them and throw them into the real world to see which ones the real world kills and which ones survive. Uh, so, you know, think of the world as your laboratory. The world and all its people are there. You can just go out and experiment. Uh, and when we experiment with things in the world, you see that the, the perfection of a design is not measured in, in its theoretical beauty. It's measured in how well it fits into the world. So for a, for a piece of design to be, to be brilliant, all it has to do, and this is, this is all it has to do, is to fit into the world perfectly. Just perfectly. <laughs> um, design is about creating something appropriate. So 
when something is appropriate to its purpose, that is beautiful, great design, and nothing more, nothing less. All right. So, how do you redesign a country? I'll tell you a story about Latendo in a moment. Um, because all you need to do to redesign a country is to start to design. I really think that everything, everything that man has made can be made better. And in the act of making things better, there is design. That's the act of making things better. So I think a country can be redesigned. Um, Lutendo is an engineer, and she works for a large corporation in Johannesburg. Um, but she comes originally from Venda in northern South Africa, uh, where her family and her people for centuries have used a specific plant to treat sore throats and also mouth sores. So Lutendo decided, why don't I use this plant and um, I, I, we've done the science the homework on this thing. Our resident scientist, Dion, has had a look at it, and he says it has very strong antibacterial properties. It's called pepper bark, or munungwane. So Lutendo decided, why don't I make a business out of taking the plants and making modern medicines out of them? And that's exactly what she's done. So because of my work with Lutendo, I know that South Africa has 20,000 plant species. I know that um, it has a floral kingdom. It's the only country that has a floral kingdom, one of six in the world within its borders. And many of those plants, uh, about 2,000 of those species, have medicinal qualities. Um, so South Africa has this wealth. Um, and each one of those plants is an opportunity for somebody to, uh, to, to, to use for the benefit of humanity. Uh, some of them, if they become businesses, if people start to sell those plants and export them, could be billion dollar businesses. Uh, but in order for Lutendo to make money and start her business and sell her plants, she needs somewhere to sell them. This is Ralph. And uh, when Ralph met Lutendo, which happened um, not so long ago, he's a guy who works in retail, in a large retailer in South Africa. And, um, He's got an interest in entrepreneurship. He also has an interest now in natural medicine. So when he met Lutendo, he said, listen, we could very easily stock products like this on our shelves. Uh, we, could, you know, we could have a whole shelf to dedicated to this. But what he would need then is lots of different people supplying him with the kind of products that like Lutendo would do uh, to see which ones sell and which ones don't sell. Um, and so he'd need these people to be able to supply products to him week in and week out, day in and day out. And, um, there aren't even, this is the problem, there aren't even enough plants in South Africa to do that with. We have enough species, but not enough of each plant. This is Amanda Gabashe. And Amanda is a traditional healer. She also works for South Africa's Bureau of Standards. And for years, she's carried around this dream of what if the plant industry in South Africa, the natural plant industry, could be something very large that could help billions of people. So she created a plan to do exactly that, to take uh, products like Lutendo's and create an industry that could sell them in stores like Stevens. This is Ank Shabalala. And he's a very senior guy. He's an official in the Department of Trade and Industry in South Africa. Um, Ank has a vision that South Africa's uh, natural resources and knowledge could be used to lift millions of people into a better life. Um, and he's very passionate about that. Uh, some of his people have worked together with Amanda to create her plan, but he's also responsible for directing government funding into uh, guiding government's use of, of plant materials and, and creating technology out of them. Um, he, he's uh, responsible for creating strategies of how government should do this. So Ank is designing strategy uh, Amanda is designing a plan, Ralph is designing a retail approach, and uh, Lutendo is designing a business with different products in it. Each of them has a day job, all right? But they've decided not to just show up and pick up the paycheck. They've decided to look around them for opportunities. And I guess we're back to side projects. <laughs> to live with purpose and uh, to create a better world around them. And each of them is making the other person's dream possible. And they're doing this today. So I could tell you about um, other people. Uh, Mpumzi, he's created an amazing new way to generate hydroelectricity. Um, 
Oriel has a dream for a better classroom. Uh, Sandile is a guy who's looking at, uh, he, well, he has, he has this real uh, uh, goal of increasing the health care that we get in hospitals, especially by reducing queuing. All of these people are designing a better South Africa. They're spending their days doing it. So what I would say is that what you need to change an entire country, to design a better country, is to have hundreds of thousands of people like these, all growing their superpower and using it. This is the Deputy President of South Africa. All right, I know, he's awesome. Uh, and a few years ago, uh, he gave me a bunch of money and he said to me, Tassos, you're a designer, right? Uh, well, we need more designers. South Africa needs more designers because designers create the things that make our country grow. And to be honest with you, I was a little starstruck. Uh, I didn't have a lot to say to him in return. And for two years, I've been thinking, what, what should I have said to him? I should have said something, you know. Um, but today, I think I know what it is. I think what I would say to him is, Yes, sir. <laughs> we do need more designers. But in fact, we have 50 million of them already, even if they don't know that yet. What each of us needs to do is to develop our superpower, to be a designer, and then together, we can design a better country. Thank you.